cult movies uh, uh, about a dystopian future, such as Blade Runner or Akira are set in 2019. You made an, uh, you make an album called The End in 2019, so the apocalypse uh, is uh, just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be, man. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, when I listened uh, to, to your album, uh, I recall the feeling that uh, I had uh, listening to uh, Flying Lotus' last album, Your Dad. Mm -hmm. I, uh, back then, I, uh, I thought uh, that the, that was just, just music uh, nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, listening to your album, I think uh, that uh, this is doom metal, uh, listening to some song. Uh -huh. and, it's not uh, just about uh, the, the music, it's such um, the, the evolution of a culture and uh, its message. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah. Uh, damn, I don't even know how to answer. Um, yeah, probably. You are inspired by doom metal. Yeah, doom metal. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, hard rock and doom metal stuff and punk music and um, so it's kind of always been with me and I think, uh, as the years go on and I, uh, play more shows and, you know, I think on my earlier albums, I never thought about playing live ever. And I would just make music thinking about not ever having to perform it. And so a lot of it was very, very hard to perform. And I was like, huh, this is funny. And I think now that I'm getting more used to playing guitar on stage and um, shit, it becomes more incorporated in, into my music. And I think more about like, uh, uh, yeah, using these kind of like live kind of guitar elements, how I would play them live in the actual recording of the record. And it ends up being more expansive. Like a, it's a bigger yeah. auditorium, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bigger, uh, uh, setting for the music or something yeah so um of course your la is different from blade run yeah. <laughs> la yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, some sort of. uh, some philosophers and uh, cultural uh, theorists say that uh, we are already experiencing the end of the world because um because the the future they promise uh never came mm -hmm. So we are already experiencing the end of the world, and we are such uh, we are sort of stuck in a sort of retromania. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think that uh, your video for rock music is a perfect picture for uh, oh, for sure. this idea. What yeah. do you think about? It? Yeah, fuck. I don't know if I thought about the the video um, speaking to that level of uh, humanity, but I think. Um, yeah, for me, the video was uh, what felt like the the uh, personification of of the the recording of the music and how it sounds, where it's kind of um, comedic in a way, like where uh, you know I think it's parody of the rocker. Yeah, rocker. yeah, and, and and you know it's like how we watch movies, like horror movies, or movies about the end of the world and can kind of laugh at them at the same time. Um, you know, it's like a serious concept, but yeah. then uh, looked at through a slightly different angle or a different lens that becomes um, uh, almost funny or enjoyable, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, do you think that uh, maybe the, the knowledge of the apocalyptic cults uh, and maybe uh, listening to doom metal and uh, or even uh, black metal could help us uh, uh, face the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depends what you like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, you know, I think uh, some good music. It's a focus in your album. Uh, yeah. It. I think, I mean, a lot of the time too, I just, I make music and then once it's done, I have to think of like, putting it together and what, what it's saying and what it represents. And so the ideas kind of come after that. And, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, that said, I think it's, it would, uh, maybe make it easier to, uh, watch the world burn 
or something, but <laughs> it's pretty grim. <laughs> yeah, uh, last Friday, Tyler the Creator released the, his last album with such an iconic disclaimer where he goes like, yeah. uh, "Don't expect anything from the album, just jump in it front to back, uh, yeah. no skip, no distraction." Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, is coming a new age for the album form of consumption of music? Uh, uh, maybe with a deeper uh, attention for the for the ones which aim to be t- timeless, like your. I would hope so. Um, it's kind of how I've always listened to music and what I think is great about having a, an album or a collection of music from someone is like, you know, listening to the whole thing as they intended it to be. Um, you know, I, I think I've always looked at, I think most, I mean, not most people now, but I think a lot of people look at music as art and to enjoy what the artist is saying and, to listen to the whole album, you know? Um, and I think now with online and streaming culture, it's easy to just pick one song that you like and not listen to the whole thing. Um, but I think there are, all, there are still a lot of people out there, hopefully, that like listening to albums, <laughs> you know? So um, I remember an interview uh, of you when, uh, from The Fader, I think, uh-huh. in... 2015 maybe yeah. where uh, you say that uh, you don't like pop music at all uh, when you uh, when you turn on the radio yeah. so uh, but I think that uh, listening to your first remix of pop music uh, this sound like such uh, prophetic of how pop music sound now so uh, yeah. you change the year meanwhile um It's really weird now because it all all pop music now sounds like the remixes <laughs> that we were making of pop music. It was how it was what our vision of you know when I say us it was like me and all a bunch of my friends that were making music together and I think we all had this idea of what we wanted pop music to sound like and it didn't at the time of everything was fucking corny and weird and uh uh i mean, not that it isn't corny and weird now, but um, it's funny listening to, like, hearing songs and people are like, oh, did you produce this? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Produce the uh, artists uh, that became mainstream, like Post Malone or Chance the Rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... You know, they were already, <laughs> they, they were gonna they were going to be very famous, <laughs> regardless. <laughs> Yeah. So one step forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I always do end up very early in like people's careers, like having like one song that will never get on Spotify or like iTunes and just only exists like on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like the Post Malone one. Yeah, like the Post Malone one and all the Jeremiah stuff. Jeremiah, and yeah. The, with the song with Chance the Rapper, it does not exist on on Spotify yeah, yeah, or yeah. iTunes or anything. It's only on it's in cloud, the uh, deep, YouTube, deep yeah. dark corners <laughs> of the internet and yeah, Reddit uh, and shit, yeah. So uh, there's always a strong concept behind uh, your music. And uh, my question is, uh, how do you keep this feeling uh, to the end of the album uh, if it's all a matter of uh, the instrument you use or there's something more? It's funny because I, I think... Um, The music definitely comes from, like, a very honest and, like, deep place for me. But it's uh, it's funny saying, like, concepts or things being conceptual because I try to not think about anything when I'm actually making the music. Yeah. And I think that's what allows it to kind of come out the way that it does. Um, and then a lot of the conceptualizing is um, once I have, you know... 40 songs or 30 songs and I'm like not this one <laughs> not this one and then you know something kind of appears and it's like the good 15 songs or something and you're like what are these saying you know what's is there a narrative like what order do these go in and like what does the story you know to tell a story without words um just kind of like the invisible narrative that you kind of It's like a, an ambient movie or something yeah, yeah. that you still feels like... I think your album, like, 
books books about yeah. something yeah 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 it feels like a like a weird book <laughs> i don't know <laughs> so there's something in uh in the master uh face yeah yeah even before that of just even before the songs are done but just trying to think of like what what's uh emerging as like a, a theme you know yeah. like because sometimes i mean mo pretty much all the time i never know what um is going to end up happening when i start making a song and when i start making lots of songs so then you know by the end i'm like oh shit there's a lot of commonalities between these songs and and this one goes into this one and it and together they kind of all make a arc of uh, that feels like a telling a story um without words and it's this weird one where you can kind of i think it's cinematic but in this way that's not forcefully cinematic it kind of like lets your mind travel and do yeah. its own narrative while you're listening to it because it's not like this is what it's about and i'm going to tell you what it's about you know it's pretty open so the end of the world is a feeling you were uh, <laughs> you were feeling uh, before the the album that yeah. came uh naturally you know <laughs> think uh yeah i'm like i don't know if I would say I'm a pessimist, but <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think the end of the world is kind of always on. <laughs> upon us. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's always upon us. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's more, uh, of a present idea than I think it has been in recent years. I think, uh, especially in the United States right now, it's hard to not <laughs> think that like, like, Oh fuck. Like what? <laughs> like what's going to happen next year? Like, I don't fucking know. Um, so like living amongst that and feeling so, um, helpless, you know, I think a lot of people, including myself, it's like, we, donate to charities and we go to the marches and we vote yeah. and and nothing helps and it's like it's like it's getting worse still and so you know it's it's one of those things i don't try to promote um people like choosing positivity and like doing whatever because it's like it's this terrible feeling that that we all have that's like this feeling of futility of not being able to help and um I think that's where the music lives in sometimes is, you know, it, a lot of the time it feels like, you know, when you record a song that it's like writing in your fucking diary or yeah. some shit. It's like my version of my diary. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, I guess sometimes it feels like something can happen where you're letting go of this kind of feeling of, of, uh, of helplessness or futility or something where you know not like it's getting better it's not doesn't make anything better but it uh just traps that feeling in a space for a little bit it can be cathartical like it was that crowd for the dad it yeah. can be cathartical for a face of the world yeah yeah um yeah you know and like i think in that time of shit you know there's always more death and more <laughs> shit uh it sounds so grim um But yeah, it's true, you know, like, yeah. I think, um, and what I wanted to do with this album was not have it just be dark and not just be um, a serious statement. And that's kind of why I wanted to create this character of yeah. like the fucking dumb wig guy. And it's like, that's to me, the guy that's recording the music, you know, that's like this fucking idiot that's making the music and like fumbling with the cables and he can't plug in it. That's how the music sounds to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was just inspired by all the cult horror movies and the bad movies that I grew up on loving and, uh, kind of taking horrific ideas and, and looking at them through a new way that makes them not necessarily comedic, but, uh, approachable and, and funny in, in a way. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And there's something in the instruments you is uh, in the, is, uh, in this weird concept in this comic concept. Yeah. 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 A lot of the sounds I think are, 
Um, you use toys. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's also stuff that's maybe not so different from what I I used to use also, but um, they're very much more like concrete and and garish. Like they're very much there. Um, like you know, in the, the song the end that the like bending bell sound. It's like very toyish and playful. I think. Yeah. Um, and same with rock music. I feel like just structurally and the chords in the song are something I don't feel like I've done before where it feels like, uh, uh, I don't even know what the fuck it feels like. Honestly, it's like, it's, it's just feels more, um, lighthearted or something, even though it is feels destructive and raw at the same time, there's something that feels, uh, like lighter and not as, uh, as like heavy and, moody and there's some stuff on the album obviously that does feel like that but um i think i was trying to approach it from a way that was trying to capture this part of me where i'm not you know i'm very much like depressed all the time but besides that i think i try and look at things like i laugh a lot you know and yeah. i'm always making fun of shit and everyone's always making fun of me and it's great and uh I think that's something that I wasn't capturing in my music before. Um, you know, I think people always listen to my records and think I'm just like, oh, I'm very serious. And, you know, and I'm like, I'm fucking not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think. Uh, it so was, you're true. Yeah. <laughs> this, you're is, very this is my this is my truth. I'm living my truth now as a fucking comedian, as a comedian. <laughs> no, I don't know. So that's all. Thank you for your time. Yeah, man, too. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you.